we talked about uh, whether to tell someone or to uh, not say nothing to no one. But uh, we felt like we needed to tell someone, but we didn't know who to tell. So we decided to call Keesler, and Keesler told us they didn't want anything to do with this, to call our local sheriff department. So we did. We stopped and called the local sheriff department. And um, now I don't have any idea what time and all this was taking place. So after we called our local sheriff department, they sent a car, patrol car out to pick us up at Charlie's apartment. You did not weather through all of this quite as well as uh, Charles did. You experienced a, a couple of breakdowns, is that correct? Yeah, I really wouldn't say it was a, a severe nervous breakdown or anything, but it's just more stress than what I could handle uh, because I had more things, you know, going on, trying to make a living. Uh, I was getting uh, married in that year, the same year, just about a month after this happened. And it's just so much pressure on me, I just couldn't stand it, you know. So I pretty much stayed out of the media. And, uh, you know, it was a time or two that I had to go in the hospital on account of my nerves. And, you know, I still have problems with my nerves. Okay, at one point you even <coughs> relieved a reporter of his camera. Yes, sir, I did. Uh, I've had so many reporters, I mean, no privacy whatsoever. And I was just tired of reporters. So the one from... Uh, the press, I believe it was the Mississippi Press, came up was taking pictures, and I told him, you know, uh -uh, let's not do this today. Let's, mm -mm, this is not in the program here. So uh, he wouldn't listen, so I had to take his old camera away and throw it down, take his old film out and all for it. Tell me about your life since that night, October 11th, 1973. Well, it's not much to tell about. Uh, I've been through uh, a couple of bad relationships, bad marriages. Uh, and most of it was my fault. You know, I wouldn't say it was my wife's fault during the time. Um, nerve problems, changed jobs, you know, several different times. Um, just a lot of different things. Eddie, on October 11th, 1973, you were stationed in Okinawa in the U.S. Marines. And you didn't hear about the encounter from your mother and father. You read about it in Stars and Stripes. Could you tell us about your reaction and, and what it felt like to uh, find out about that this way? Yes, uh, my first reaction was shock because uh, I really didn't understand what had happened to my father. And uh, when I read the parts about where Dr. Harder and Dr. Heineck came down to do an investigation, I didn't really understand what all that involved. That led me to believe that there, there may have been some harm done to him. Uh, I had no way of finding out other than waiting for a letter to come from home. And the, the, the articles in the paper were just bits and pieces, you might say. Two men were picked up and were boarded a UFO on the Pascagoula River in Pascagoula, Mississippi. And basically that's all that was in the paper, the first article. Uh, I think there was two articles that followed that maybe in, in a week's time, but it didn't give me much more information than that. And I, I really didn't know what to think. How did the other members of your company react? They, um, they acted, reacted sort of surprised. There was several guys in my company there from Mississippi. Uh, they were quite concerned because we had been stationed at other bases together. Uh, nobody ridiculed me. Uh, they were quite interested in it. Uh, they were as anxious as I was to find out some information from home to see what really happened. And they were just basically good-natured about it, you know. Tisha, at the time of your father and Calvin's encounter, you were a very small child, so young that you don't even really remember the encounter. But the years have come and gone. We're here 14 years later, and the book, UFO, Contact of Pascagoula, has been published. Your father and Calvin's story has been uh, on the front page of the major newspaper here on the Gulf Coast, as well as some of the smaller newspapers. Tell us about uh, the years growing up. The, uh, was there ever a time that you had any doubt about their story? And, and also, if you would, the uh, reaction of your friends and acquaintances outside of the family. Well, I've never doubted my parents. Um, I believe everything they say. And my friends have supported me real well. And they've always been there. There's been no ridicule towards me or towards the book. And they, everybody's just been real good to me. 
Blanche, if it could all be done over again, would you prefer that Charlie and Calvin didn't report this incident? No, I'd, I'd want him to report it. I certainly would. Because he has, it, it's happened to him and he's, pro and he's proven it's happened to him. And it's all true. So regardless of uh, any of the frustrations or, or problems that it may have created over the years, uh, if any, you would still want it to be reported and for people to know? I certainly would. It was real frightening to me that night and scary. It was hard for me to believe, you know, just like everybody else, you know, I guess they thought the same thing I did, you know, we didn't know if it was real or what happened. But uh, the next day I knew it did happen to him. And from days on and weeks on and months on, I knew it happened to him because he had cold sweats, had to change his sheets at least two and three times a night from cold sweats. And he's never been the same since, and I haven't either.